Hi, and welcome back to the show. This is Joe Rabel with Rabel Stock Research. So today, I want to start out with a lesson, as I always do. I want to talk about uh, entry patterns, entry signals, and how important it is to have an understanding of if you want to get in earlier, you're going to take on more risk. But there's typically anywhere from three to five entry signals in almost every reversal pattern. So I want to go through those just to give you a little bit of an idea. Um, and it really kind of depends on your tolerance for risk. So let's look at this agenda. We're going to talk about change in trend and the entries and the different entries based on risk and your risk profile. There's no right or wrong this way. Everybody has their own way of looking at things. Some people want to be in earlier. Uh, some people want more confirmation. And in this case, I just want to explain that if you want more confirmation, you're typically going to pay up for it. And I'll show you that in a second. And then I uh, also think it's pretty important to know what MACD and ADX is doing in these reversal patterns, because I think they can give you an edge and they can help you to be a little bit more confident, especially if you're going in and being a little bit more aggressive. So let's go ahead and get into this and uh, this is a one page out of uh, my book, but I've changed it to use the uh, stockcharts.com daily chart. The reason I did that is because I wanted to show a few extra things uh, on this video that uh, weren't included on the page from my book. So um, one of the things I think, let's just start from the bottom. So if, if you think about the evolution of a bottom, right, we have a declining pattern of lower highs and lower lows. We've got pretty strong momentum characteristics, especially on this leg. But then we rally up, we make a lower low. Now MACD makes a higher bottom, but ADX makes a lower high as well. So that would be considered divergence. The only thing I'll say is that because this was well above the 25 level, you see how this blue peak got well above 25, I would not consider this to be all that negative or all that positive, I should say, in this case, because we're, we're at a low and we're looking for signs of divergence or momentum divergence. Uh, we have that in MACD, but this is not the type of signal where I would get all that excited about, except for a trading play, which is essentially what happened, a rally back into resistance zone. So we have some resistance back here from this prior peak, from some of the moving averages and everything. Uh, that, you know, yes, you could say we've got a uh, potential for a rally. But now if you look at the next decline, um, you've got another layer of divergence in MACD. This makes another higher bottom. And you always want to compare the most recent bottom uh, and not go all the way back. I mean, that's my preference. I like to look at these uh, more immediate uh, comparative lows. Now, if you look at that, that's two layers of of bullish momentum divergence. This time, the ADX can't get above 25. This is a much more bullish scenario for this stock because you can't. when ADX has been trending and making peaks above 25 and then it can't make a peak above 25, you should be looking for signs of reversal. So if we look at that from a standpoint of being aggressive, if we wanted to play kind of like the most aggressive entry, we'd use this low coming back up through that and we got this big, huge green bar. So this is a very aggressive entry because we haven't even broken the downtrend line yet. But if you notice what we've got, we've got two layers of divergence in MACD and we've got a pretty significant um, faltering ADX after a trending period to the downside. So we're, this, this trend is definitely losing strength to the downside. Then we get this big monster green bar that opens at the low and closes at the high and gets back up through this prior low. So we're kind of springing this bottom and uh, with a big green bar. So that's the most aggressive entry, okay? I know this is considered one in my book. I would call this pre-one, right? I mean, this is before we've really broken the trend line, you're getting an aggressive. If you want to be aggressive, then this might take place in a scenario where the market's gotten way overdone and you're looking for some kind of a climax or some kind of reversal that way. That's a pretty good way to maybe go about getting in these stocks when you want to be aggressive. It's not for everybody. And if your risk tolerance doesn't, you know, doesn't adhere to that, then I wouldn't do it. Now, one thing I'll say is the one is considered an entry. But um, I, I want to make this point. Most of the time, I don't play the one. Now, if you go back and look at what happened in 2020, 
20 at the low. The hourly chart had tested a trend line four or five times in a row. And then when it finally broke through that, I knew that this was something really significant. It was just testing it over and over again. It wasn't breaking away. It was a very, it was crystal clear to me that it was a, a very important line. And when it broke, it wasn't over, over, overbought when it broke through because it was pretty tight. It was a pretty tight pattern. So you can go back if you have the history and look at the hourly on the 2020 and see what I'm talking about. In that case, I do like to buy the one. Okay, and I, I would play that one. But most of the time in a scenario like this where you make a big move and then you move up and then you come back down and you test the 18 for the first time when it's rising. You see all these other times we went up and failed, up and failed, tried to get up through here, failed, tried to get up through here, failed. And then we held it here, but it wasn't rising yet. This is the first time you're pulling back to a rising 18. That's the two. That's the test after the break of the trend line. You've come back and tested about a 33%, 38% retracement. Um, so what I would do is go into a smaller time frame at this point. This is a daily chart. I go down to the hourly and look for a reversal pattern to take place. So this is kind of like my most preferred entry point. Break of the trend line, come back and test. If everything looks good, we've got improvement in MACD. We've got improvement in green DI. This is the first real sign that we've had that since this turn. OK, this is a more confident entry and you're getting it on a pullback back to support. So I like all of those criteria. Now, three would be more confirming evidence, but look at how much you're paying up for three. So if I'm buying two down in here, I've got to pay up for three here. And in a lot of cases, you'll be overbought when you're breaking out at three. But you do have more confirmation that the trend is turning up. Now, four is actually the final entry point. So if this is the pre one, that's one, two, three, four. This would really be five. And that is after we've completed an uptrend and then we get the first higher low after that. It had a little pinch play. We had momentum. See how the momentum is already confirmed because it's crossed above 25 now, the ADX. So we have more confirming evidence of a trend change and we're getting our first pullback after that. So if you look at the difference between entry here and entry here, it's pretty significant. You're paying up for that kind of confirmation. So um, it all depends on your risk tolerance, though. If you don't want to get whipped around a lot, you don't, you, you'd rather have more confirmation than either three or four might be your way to go. Um, if you like to be a little bit more on the aggressive side, you could play this way. I think personally playing the two is the best combination. I like to be in a little bit on the early side, but I don't really like playing this. I used to try and do this and I got stopped out a lot. So I like to wait for a little bit of confirmation, get the first pullback after you break the downtrend line. And uh, this is a pretty strong scenario, especially if you're looking at it in multiple time frames and you have other evidence taking place that I think can help uh, improve things. But just keep an eye on improvement in MACD and Green DI will certainly improve your case. So hope this makes sense. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and uh, I'm probably cover some of this as we go into the individual stocks, but let's go ahead and do the analysis now. Just briefly, my services can be found at rablestockresearch.com. I send out about two to three reports each week for the individual package, uh, try and generate individual stock ideas, plus try and help investors uh, make it through a very difficult environment right now, uh, looking at the market as well as sectors. Uh, if you have an interest in trying this service, you can use a coupon code STOCKTALK and get the first two months for $50. Let's go ahead and get into the stocks now. Okay, I had a question on uh, when and where to draw the trend line. Um, and so I wanted to start out with, uh, I'm using Microsoft as an example. Um, now, the question was, they said they were looking at a weekly and a daily and wanted to know where to draw the trend line. And so I just want to show you this because I think uh, it, it is relevant and especially to what we're talking about and what I just discussed in terms of the one, two, three reversal. So um, if you look at Microsoft, now the question was based on a weekly and a daily, but I'm going to use a daily and an hourly. OK, daily up here, hourly over here. Um, we had this undercut pattern. You see how this went underneath on the daily chart and then moved up. And now we've got this. So I call this an undercut and rally where we go up and we rally up and then we get the first pullback, which is a pinch play on the daily chart. 
Okay, now we've gotten two or three lower highs. So one of the things that I want you to think about in terms of where to draw the trend line is if you're getting a pullback on the higher time frame, which is the trend time frame or the setup time frame, you draw your trend line on the lower time frame. And so if you're getting a pullback in one time frame, that's really where you're trying to draw your trend line. Now, you don't always get that opportunity because of the way the pullback develops. You might not uh, get to draw in that trend line. But in this case, let me just zero in on this and show you um, we have a peak here before the low. You see how this is the low of the move? And then you go back to the prior peak. That's the anchor for the trend line. And then what we do is we draw through that trend line. We make uh, draw through that low. So we make sure that that is the second point on the trend line. This is the first point. If we put it here, we'd be going through prices. It's not a big deal if you do that, but in this case, I, I definitely would probably just use this trend line here. Um, and if you notice what happened, we we broke the trend line and then got a test. Um, so we went in the zone between the 18 and the 40 and then came out, tested the low, and then coming back up through, I would say this is probably, we didn't have divergence, so this is probably your first entry point, this bar right here, and then you know, really getting convincing evidence getting through the 40 and that prior high would be your next entry. And then you might be fighting on a pinch play to get in here and that would be the four. So there was no pre one, right? And the one would be breaking the trend line. In this case, we're below both moving averages. We don't have any proof of any kind of reversal. The only good news we had is that the ADX was, was not making a new peak um, above 25 here. Um, okay, so I just wanted to cover that real quickly. Let's go, start going through. Um, I want to. I'm going to touch on the S and P and the QQQ real quick. Um, and and the reason is I actually want to focus in on RSI. And if we look at so uh, I've done a video on RSI here on the show, and uh, what I talk about is using a uh, the red line is a 20 RSI. And then this blue line, grayish line, is a 5 RSI. And the 50 mark is really important. Okay, so when we break the 50 mark, that's telling, and the 20 is below the 50 mark, that's sort of telling you that the trend is negative. Um, what the blue line does is tell us whether we're overbought or oversold. And I like to use that 50 mark for that, inf uh, that information. Now, when we get below 30 or above 70, we look for signs of divergence. If you notice, the RSI 5 is diverging here. We don't really have divergence at all on the RSI 20. OK, but the five is diverging and that could help us get a little bit of a rally here. Now, if we switch to the QQQ, look at the difference. Not only do we have an RSI uh, five divergence, we also have divergence on the 20. All right. Now, it's not oversold. We, we didn't get this down to 30 and then get divergence. And when we get that, we should expect something pretty big. But the fact that we have divergence on both of these, this should lead to a little bit better rally here. Now, I mean, I'm not saying to get bullish or anything. I'm just saying we've been oversold. We're hitting the lower end of the channel again. It's It would make sense for this to get a, a decent rally, at least to see... Um, in both cases, I'd probably want to see the RSI 5 get over 50. Um, in this case, it might actually go be a little bit more aggressive than that. So um, in, in both of these, we're, we're looking for maybe a short-term rally, but it is counter trend to the main trend, which is clearly bearish when you look at the major moving averages and you look at the price action. All right. Um, let's look at GLD. So... GLD just broke below its recent lows on the daily chart. Um, red DI is starting to move here. So, I, I mean, it's, it's a little concerning. Now, there is new support uh, underneath. You can see right around 160, there is support for the GLD. Um, but I don't like the fact that it's gotten back below the two weekly moving averages. It's below the 18-month line. The 18-month line is starting to roll over. It just looks like this is going to take time. I don't know if there's a lot of downside risk in this uh, GLD, but I, I do think that this is going to take a lot more time now uh, because it's probably going to come down here and test, and then it's going to need to kind of cup around and consolidate um, after the negative action that we just saw. So nothing to be in a big hurry about on the GLD or in gold in general. Most of the gold stocks look like this as well. 
Let's go back and take a peek at um, ARKK, the ARK Innovation Fund. So, um, you know, and let's look at it from a long-term standpoint. You see how we made this big run to the upside. And I mean, look at what happened at the peak. You see the bars, see how the difference in the bars, see how these were nice green bars without much wick to them, a little bit here, but then a really strong bar, a little bit of a pause and then strong green bar. And then we started to get a little wick here, little wick here, big wick here, and then it's turned red. So we're getting farther away from the moving average and we're starting to see signs of distribution with these individual bars on a monthly chart. I mean, this is a huge advantage that you want to be able to take advantage, uh, look at. Use the higher time frame bars to give you insights into what's really taking place. Then we came down, made a lower peak, broke through the 18. Now this 18 um, month line has rolled over. Okay, this is a very, very important point. Um, we are oversold relative to that line. I mean, there's no doubt that we could rally, but when we're below a declining 18 month line, the bias is negative. Okay, it, and we're into support. So I would consider this uh, a bearish trend, oversold in a bearish trend. That's how I would look at this. This is probably going to try and rally, but it is a counter trend rally. As long as we're below the 18 month line, it's the long term trend is bearish. Um, and uh, so now what could improve the intermediate term trend is if we can break through the 18 week line and have that turn up. And then what I would do is say, OK, I've got room between the 18 week and the 18 month for some kind of a rally if that works out. Right now, we're getting above the 18 day. OK, that 18 day is starting to cup around. If this can have a little bit more follow through, then we can assume we're going to make it to the 18 week. OK, so you use the 18s as your barometer for the next uh, time frames resistance. So if I get this one moving to the upside, now I know the resistance is coming in around 50 bucks. OK, if I get through 50 and I can get this to cup around and flatten out and cup around, then I know what my next target would be on the on the monthly chart. So use these uh, 18s that way, and I think it'll keep you on track. And this is a whole re one of the main reasons why I love using multiple time frames. OK, so um, some individual stock requests. I had some uh, it was an interesting week in terms of the requests, um, but I definitely wanted to cover a, a couple indexes anyway. So. Um, Look at what's going on with the Micron. Now, the semiconductors, generally speaking, have not traded well at all. Uh, we've got a move, another break in uh, Micron where it didn't hold support here. Um, and that just happened recently, just in the last few weeks. Um, now we're coming down to the next pool of money, right? I've got, I call this a pool. And we're coming back, we're coming back to the upper end of that. Um, momentum is not that strong. We're only at 22 on the weekly ADX. So it's very possible based on this because we've made a pretty good drop and the ADX is not above 25. So when I see that, I'm sort of inclined to believe that this area is probably going to hold at 50 and this may end up forming some kind of a trading range or something like that. Now, don't get me wrong. This has some pretty good resistance where it broke down from. That's that's going to be a problem, but it does look like it could end up forming a range between there, um, between this area around 50 and that breakdown point. So um, just something to keep in mind with this, because it's uh, it, it looks pretty ugly. But I bet in the near term, the downside risk is probably not all that bad. Uh, again, at least for now, uh, ABBV is pretty impressive. Uh, look at the trend on the monthly chart, the 18 and the 40 moving up at about the same rate. We've got confirmation on MACD. We've got confirmation in ADX. The last peak here to the upside on the weekly chart was confirmed by uh, both MACD and ADX. It's a bullish sign. But in the process of pulling back, we broke the 18 and that's kind of flattened out. So what I normally expect when this happens is for this to consolidate and have these two lines kind of come together. The 18 and the 40 should come together a little bit more. This should work its way back closer to the zero line. Um, and then I think we'll have another buy setup um, develop. I don't want to take this reversal here. You see how we've got like a one, two, three developing. 
The problem is we did it from such a deep level and the 18 is rolling over. I think that's what wants to act as resistance. The MACD is kind of turned the wrong way. So don't get caught up in looking at this before looking at this. Always look at the higher time frame first and then go to the lower time frame. Okay, so I have another uh, question that came in regarding um, this MUSA. Very nice looking pattern. We made a nice move to the upside and then pull back on the uh, weekly chart back to an 18, which is rising above a 40. They're moving up at about the same rate. ADX is very strong, but notice what happened in the MACD. So we had a pullback and if you notice, it was kind of sharp. That was kind of a sharp. We had a little gap in there. It was a pretty sharp little pullback. We had overrun in MACD. Now this is strong and this is kind of overrunning. So how do we look at this? What is our, what is our uh, standard operating procedure when we see this? For me, I, I don't want to get caught up in playing the first move in most cases. Okay, I, I don't want to do that. I'm expecting some kind of a retracement back up and then a move like that. All right, so I know that in the back of my mind, but this is really strong ADX. And I mean, this is a, a, a retracement back through the signal line, but the overall pattern really does not look bad. If we go to the daily chart, and this is where the question came in, we had this move to the downside that caused overrun here. All right, now we moved up and came back and tested and if you notice, the MACD actually held on the test. You see how the MACD held above its signal line on the test? So I think that's good enough to consider that a, a, a good enough test after the overrun to consider this to be an entry pattern here. All right. So I wouldn't have a problem doing that on the entry side. But as I mentioned before, looking at the weekly chart, I'm inclined to believe that this wants to come back and test. So if I want to take this entry on the daily chart, it's pretty simple what I would be doing. I wouldn't have a problem getting in there, but I have to use this as a stop, this low here. I can't use this one um, at this point, all right? I've got to stick with this one. And the reason is, is because what I'm seeing on the weekly chart, it's suggesting that this could come back and test again. So if you want to play this because you don't want to move, miss it, all right, that's how I would go about doing it. You play the move, uh, off of daily chart because it did give a proper signal, low ADX pattern. You had a test after the overrun, um, good enough of a signal. And um, if, if that's the case, you want to play it, that's fine. But you got to give it more room to start. Now, if we pull back again and hold the 18 and then turn up, then from there, you can raise your stop a little bit higher. Let's look at a couple more stocks. Um, so I really like the looks of this III. Look at this coming back to the breakout point. It's pulling back to the 18 month. We have really good momentum conditions in place. What's missing is we need to see that test. You see how this is the overrun on the MACD on the weekly chart? We have low ADX, but what we need is a move up and then a test. And this needs to kind of come up and test as well. Come up and test the signal line. All right, so we need some little bit more of a move and then come back and test the 18. If we have that set up, I think that's a pretty good looking pattern. Something you could definitely consider doing. So um, something to watch. But if you notice, we need a little bit more strength and then we need to hold on a pullback. I mean, we're asking a lot in a, in a bear market. It's, this stock would have to do a lot to get itself set up, but it's one I would keep on my watch list. Live person is uh, is interesting from this standpoint. We we know what we're seeing in the QQQ with the divergence, right? Look at this. We had a move down and then a rally up and a move back down. Notice how MACD is making a higher bottom. Now, we don't have any kind of divergence in ADX. So what does that mean? That means we could look for a trading play, okay? We can look for a trading play back up into resistance. It's not like we're going to, I don't think we're going to see a big reversal, but we are coming into pretty big support. You see how this came all the way back to the breakout point here? So this is a stock that you could go down to a daily chart, look for entries on uh, as a potential uh, rally, you know, could ensue at least getting back towards the uh, 20 area. So anyway, something to keep in mind just based on the way this is setting up and the way the cues are setting up. 
Now, here's one of the main reasons why I use multiple time frames. On the higher time frame here, this was a stock that I was watching. It's moving up and then it pulled back to the 18 month. We had confirmation on this time frame. As we're pulling back, we're making lower highs and lower lows on the weekly chart. What never happened, we never got the one. We never got the one. We didn't have divergence. We didn't have any real signs of a reversal taking place. There's no reason why you would have been caught in this if you were using two time frames. The only way you could have gotten caught in this is if you um, went ahead and bought this right at the 18. I mean, if you just did that, then, you know, that could be considered, um, you know, a, a uh, an entry for yourself, but I don't do it that way. I go down to the smaller time frame and I wait for the trigger on the lower time frame. Let's quickly take a look at Coke. So Coke has all the characteristics on a relative basis, good relative performer. The problem I've got with this is there's no momentum, low ADX, low ADX, low ADX, no strength. I think we're caught in a range here. Well, that's the end of the show. Thanks for watching. If you have an individual stock request, send it to stocktalk at stockcharts.com. Have a great week and we'll see you next time. Hey guys, Dave Keller here with stockcharts.com. Thanks so much for watching our video. If you enjoyed it and we hope you did, hit the like button right below. Also, we have so much new content every day. Consider subscribing to the channel. Just hit the subscribe button in the video or right below. Thanks for watching. Stay safe. Have a fantastic day.